because you don't know what your business model should be or you don't know what the future will hold, but you know that your customers have needs. Yeah. And if you meet those, you're going to be more successful than your competitors. I would expand that a little okay. bit because it needs and creating value are, are kind of uh, pretty close together, mm -hmm. right? So if we look at it only from a needs standpoint, my customer needs to eat. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if I look at it from a creating value standpoint, my customer wants to have a great time with friends and family mm -hmm. and they need to eat at mm -hmm. the same time. Right. So where, where are we going to identify the price premium and the mm -hmm. emotional connection and the loyalty mm -hmm. that's built in a good relationship centric uh, business model? Mm -hmm. And the, this evolution of business models, you, you can't kind of jump over a phase of development. You, mm -hmm. ha you have to go through all of them in, in, a, in a progression. But understanding where you're going, there are a lot of things that can be built in parallel. Mm -hmm. So if I understand that, uh, well, the auto loan example that I used before, if I understand that my customer is not dreaming about an auto loan, uh, I should probably think of mm -hmm. what it is my customer is dreaming about mm -hmm. and help them to achieve that dream or achieve their goal in a mm -hmm. faster, more efficient, more comfortable way. Mm -hmm. um, if I understand that my customer has some cyclical nature of that goal, like mm -hmm. they're going to buy a car every few years, I should start thinking about what happens in between each individual event and mm -hmm. how I can smooth that out mm -hmm. and make it an easier process for mm -hmm. my customer. And so it gets into different territory mm -hmm. when we're talking about value versus just a need. Okay. Well, what about the idea that, for example, um, you don't need to uh, ask your partner what they need? Yeah. Because you're in a relationship that you can anticipate. That's yeah. what you're talking about. Then. If you're in a relationship-centric uh, environment, so one of the, the tenets of, of relationship centricity is mutually beneficial relationships. Mm -hmm. So in principle, the, the, let's say the, the business and the customer should at least have some understanding of, of each other mm -hmm. and what their needs and how the value is created. So I might be, as a customer, I'm going to be less price sensitive if I'm constantly getting value. There's an example that I always use, uh, which is a health club. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you think about what a health club does, it's a terribly kind of product-driven model, right? Mm -hmm. We provide a space with a bunch of equipment mm -hmm. and so on. Who dreams about the space, right? So what I, what I dream about is having a great body, mm -hmm. being more attractive to a potential partner, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not, not being overweight, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. If somebody said, hey, you're going to pay $100 a month for your health club membership and you get all this access and, and whatever, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a need. I need to go there. If somebody says, hey, we're going to work with you and over the course of three months, we're going to guarantee you that you'll be 10 kilos lighter uh, and you're going to pay $500 a month for that. I would probably do it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been working on this 10 kilos for a while, so I would, I would probably find the, the value in that and I, and I wouldn't have a problem parting with that extra money uh, knowing that the value is there. In the end, even if it's seven or eight kilos, I'd probably be perfectly satisfied mm -hmm. and, and, and walk away recommending that and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this kind of concept of how value is created is, is interesting when you move into. So I like the term mutually beneficial relationships because that's something that at the, that's the thriving stage, then let's say. Yeah. So that's where you're aiming for. So what's your, we talk about having these stepping stones. One yeah. of those ones that the direction you're heading in is creating those relationships. Yeah. Because you need to then discover what, your customers value, yeah. what will add value to them yeah. in a change world. And we don't yet know that. So yeah. you can't say it at the moment, but you have to build you have to build the community or you have to build the you have to build the relationship to be able to get there. Yeah. Yeah. But in the short term you can also adopt that mutually beneficial relationship with your staff. Because that's a network as well. Yeah. In terms of we're gonna need you and you're gonna need us. You can potentially negotiate those relationships and parameters for those relationships now as well. Yeah. Could you not? Well, I, so you, you just hit on a very interesting territory. A relationship-centric organization is relationship-centric on all fronts. Mm -hmm. So a relationship-centric organization understands that without good relationships with employees, mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult for the organization to build uh, relationships, with outsiders, relationships yeah. with outsiders, whether those outsiders are a partner, the government, the media, the mm -hmm. customer, whoever, but, but really without having a, a, a good model for managing relationships mm -hmm. inside of the organization, you, you can't really expect great relationships with customers. Mm -hmm.